welcome back to series 3 episode 6 of my Arsenal save. Um, it's evolving into different things every episode it seems. Started out as an invincible challenge, turned into a Champions League challenge. We're still here with the Champions League challenge. And last time out we did have a success in the final group game of the Champions League uh, campaign. And it did secure us top spot. Uh, so go back and watch that episode if you haven't seen that before. But we're back with the Premier League today. We said we we're going to come back from Man United and we have come back from Man United. Um, we've had a few games <coughs> pardon me, in between <coughs> and we've had a few transfers as you can see we're in the January now um, not too many to talk about a few have come in but they're really young kind of players that I'm looking for for the future and I've got a few more of those sort of Brazilian young 18 year old Brazilian team teams that maybe going to come in in a year year or two because um, I'm toying with playing the save on beyond the save but do let me know if, it, if you don't want me to go another season, maybe have another crack at the Invincibles or anything like that. You know, I may consider it and carry it on into the end of the FM19 sort of cycle. It, it, it's something I'm considering, but I have got a few other irons in the fire I want to pop out. But if the Arsenal save is what you want to see, let me know. Um, yeah, so the games, we'll have a look at those transfers in a minute. We'll have a quick look at the games we've played since that Persitas game. And I, I won't sort of go through them one by one, I will just sort of quickly pop through them. Uh, so... Who do we start with? We we followed the game up uh, against Persis 4 0 win with a away 2 1 away win at uh, Everton. Uh, we did concede an own goal right at death from the goalkeeper. From what I remember, it hit the post, hit his head, and went in. One of those goals, but we did take the lead through Abamiang, uh, doubling the lead through uh, Torreira just around the 50 minute mark. And it was a fairly even game, but we were probably more dominant with the shots, I'd say, from, from the game. We had a few players missing I think here, a bit of rotation coming in for rest, arresting, that sort of thing. But all in all a great result against um, a decent Everton team I think, I think they're doing quite well. Um, we then had the League Cup quarter final, uh, we had four rotation in this one. Um, we went out with a 2-0 loss and we went out with a bit of a whimper really. They've got Harry Maguire, Valencia, they've got, you know, in real life you know, got a bit of money and they're sort of showing that in the game, they've got Ben Woodman on the bench, I assume on loan, Fosu Mensa. They've Got some, got some good talent in there. Uh, Neves, obviously, Kolarov's there. Then Donka, Maguire, Valencia. It's a very good, very good outfit, and they absolutely battered us. I mean, we weren't in the match. Okay, yes, it was a rotated team and a few players playing out of position. This sort of thing. A uh, few players maybe playing for a bit of a future here, uh, but yeah, it wasn't to be. But like I say, it wasn't a, a massive worry for me. That's why we put the full rotation out and sort of went with that. We then. Who did we have? We had a 5 0 home win against Bournemouth. Uh, absolute demolition job. Torreira opening and scoring. Abamian getting a double. Mkhitaryan getting one. And Jadon Sancho sort of impressing in this game as well. Uh, again, back to normal win winning ways and us playing really well. They've got Michael Keane in there, Danny Rose. So again, you know, the game is sort of evolving a little bit and getting a bit interesting. Uh, Kalanoglu's in there. I remember him from FIFA with his super free kicks. Just banging them in with him for quite a while. We've got Shalotto, I think he was at Brighton for a little while. Ben Yedda's there. Hesse is there as well. So yeah, good little team, Bournemouth, but not good enough for us in the night. And we, you know, we were quite a lovely 5-0 win. Um, then we took that form into another home game against Burnley, 3-0. I think they are a bit more struggling. They do still have Sean Dyche as manager. And we are starting to now hit a bit of good form. Uh, good performances on top of the results as well, which is nice to see. And... It's primarily because we started putting in a few players that were playing last season. It's almost like some of the signings either haven't gelled yet or they've they've got something in them. I have to look into it a bit deeper, maybe some player traits uh, or just something about them that maybe isn't making them function in this tactic or how we're playing to make them the perfect player. Is it something to look at in the summer? Who knows? It, I think a season bedding in should be enough. Um, and then next year we can look, but you know, only he's come back in, he's playing well. Um, there's a few others. Um, Torreira, I think, stepped in a bit more. Um, there's there's others, but yeah, we. I'm trying to think who else they are. Holdings come back in for um, Reece Oxford and Sule. So yeah, something to think about. Sessegnon's coming a little bit. He's probably done the best of the new signings, actually. To be fair. Um, Gomez has done alright as well, obviously, of course. But yeah, good 3 0 win. Uh, Rob Holding opening and scoring. Mkhitaryan doubling the lead on the hour and then El Nenny the penalty right at the death. They have Marouane Fellaini. Robbie Brady got sent off. Anyone else there who's a bit interesting? I'm just trying to look at the teams as I go, really, because it's Patrick Roberts, I think, has just joined. I think it's Norwich. Is it Norwich or Villa? One of the teams that's come up. They've just signed him on loan from City. 
they've got a South Korean in there but nothing else that really jumps out too mad uh, we then Aston Villa topical at the moment obviously having as I'm recording this not long come up through the playoffs I think it was about a couple of days ago maybe a week ago is it about yeah it was wasn't it yeah they beat Dobby Dobby Cup am I right in saying that they beat Dobby in the playoffs I'm pretty sure I'm a bit blur that weekend um, but a narrow tuna win for us but an, out, an Aubameyang goal again seals the win at the 90th minute but, you know following an early lead from Mika time but we did absolutely batter them the shots on target maybe wasn't as bad, the best and as good as it could have been but still a very good performance and yeah good 2-0 win against I think, I think they did cut up this they might have been in the Premier League a few years I'm not too sure on this in this iteration of the universe um, we then went in the FA Cup third round a tough game against West Ham but we did even with the full rotation, I went with it again. Again, the cup games weren't my bread and butter. This league in Champions League this year, the the League Cup and the FA Cup could be a bit of an unwanted distraction. But Sessegnon, a double from Sessegnon. I mentioned he was playing well. He got a double in this game. I think he played on the left mid midfield. He did um, getting double, seeing us through, and probably on the balance, probably a little bit lucky to have gone through. Yarmolenko scored a late one uh, to get one back, put a little bit of fear in there, but we had just enough to, to hold on and get the result and get through to the fourth round we, we will have a look at who we got now in fact uh, we've got Derby County uh, we just mentioned them in the in the playoff final uh, so yeah we've got them in a couple of games but we obviously won't be doing that on camera we've got United today and then the final game before the United game today is Huddersfield at home and a Bamian goal just on the hour probably should have been more but they just did well to keep us out Stepanenko plays for them he obviously um was on my Shakhtar save, he went to Man City and then came back. Man City for big money, came back eventually. Uh, a bit cheaper, I think he went via Arsenal. I think he went to Arsenal, then Man City, or Man City, then Arsenal, then back to us. Um, for a bit cheaper when he was a bit older, but already at Huddersfield in this in this world. And yeah, that was about it really. But 2-1 win, uh, sorry, 1-0 win does the job. And we'll have a look at the league in a minute, but I just wanted to quickly gloss over some of the transfers. So the last actual transfer we made was Gomez from Zettel Vigo, but we then signed... This was one that was already in progress, young Kosovo and the winger. Um, I don't know why I signed him, I have no idea. I think I got a good rating from him at the time and it's just been a while since he actually signed. I think I signed him last season but I had to wait for him to turn 18. He's got five caps for Kosovo but I mean that's probably not too difficult. Um, hasn't played for his club who are in Finland. Um, the rating yet is, isn't good, he's got a bit of a prospect but yeah, not too sure quite what's going on with that one. Uh, we've then signed, I think he's a goalkeeper, no, centre-back Leandro Romano uh, from Hurricane in Argentina, central defender. Excited by this one, he's a good one. He's still on a youth contract, I think, isn't he? I know, he's, it's because of the Brexit thing. We can sign under certain pl players on per work permits, but if under 23, they go into the youth team until they earn a work permit or something. So I think I might have to look at loaning him out. Not too sure, but he looks very good. Or until he earns a British permit, in which case by the time he's 22, 23, he may have done. But we'll have to loan him to an English club to get that because he's going to stagnate sitting on under 23s all this time. And yeah, it's not. That's something to think about. That's something that Brexit's going to affect us with, with signing these foreign players. And the final one so far is Danny Caballos from. Who does it? Or Celta Vigo. Another Celta Vigo player, another striker. Again, looks very good. 18 years old, sitting in under 23s for the same reason, youth work permit. Two star current, a bit like they've won. Four star, possibly five star potential. He looks like he could be a bit of good. He's got one goal in one game, four star to be go in the uh, La Liga. So, yeah, very exciting prospect. Um, again, going to try and get him loaned out, I think, just to get him to first team football. Uh, he's 18 now, so yeah, probably worth it. We'll look at those. We'll see who comes in in the rest of the transfers. And then we'll try and get them all out uh, to some of our affiliates. Maybe we've got a few like Sunderland and stuff. So, we'll try and get those out. But what we're going to do now, we're going to jump in to the game against United. So I am going to cut back for the lineups because I haven't actually done them before this game. So one moment. I do love the pause feature on this new software I'm using. I don't have to have separate files. I can just do it on one file, but pause recording. It's absolutely fantastic. My old one, I had to create new files and I could have about four or five files on a save, maybe more sometimes, depending on what it was. But we are see who we're going to up against today it is still managed by Jose Mourinho Lukaku up front Sanchez on the left former master player of course Matic Pogba Usman Dembele on the right Emre Chan from Liverpool player in the middle holding midfield area and they've got a couple of young Portuguese players I think he's Spanish actually or Drew's owner uh, Bailey Bailly uh, Ruben Diaz he's a very expensive young Portuguese player he's absolutely fantastic for them 
Uh, it's Lucas Hernandez, yep. And the guy's still there. They've got Pavel on the bench. Who's this guy? Oh, Eric Dyer, okay. Uh, uh, Herrera, Rashford. Gilson Martins, Lindelof, and Dean Henson, goalkeeper at Sheffield United this season in real life. He's back on them, back in, in United and in and around the first team. Um, look at times, he gets his old club for us, obviously, he created 10 and 17 for us, so he's very much in form, got the little gold star there. Um, we've got Aubameyang and Gomez up front, Sancho, Torreira, Diawara, Infit El Nenny, I'm not sure why, did I miss him? I must have missed him, I think I did a bit of an auto-select and changed around, and forgot to change him back, but hopefully it doesn't cause too much of an issue. We've got Mkhitaryan, Kazawa, uh, Holding, Socrates, Bellerin and Leno, we are at full strength, possibly El Nenny bit of an injury, a bit I want to say. I'm sure I looked at him, so I must have left him out for a reason. Uh, so we'll send the assistant here, and we'll get underway at Old Trafford, and hopefully we are top of the table. We didn't look at the table, did we? We are four points clear of Manchester City. I think that's with today's game, but obviously no one's scored yet. So hopefully we can keep that going, build on that. Man United aren't in direct threat of the um, the top spot, but obviously teams there's a well, Arsenal Man City seem to be the two at the moment. Chelsea not far behind. Liverpool a little bit further behind. Man United then even further behind. But we've gone Wendell down from Paul Pogba inside three minutes. And it's good play by United. They work it well. So Pogba's seen a lot of ball in the midfield and he just drives forward. No one closes him down. He just runs, which probably wouldn't do in real life. <laughs> he doesn't like running, it seems. No, that's probably a lie. But um, just buries one from distance and very disappointing to start in, starting point there for us but we need to bounce bounce back straight back into this and so far they very much seem to be on the intensity and really up for this whereas we so far don't I and mean, it's early days don't be 2-0 after four minutes Jesus but a long shot from Matic goes wide it's another highlight for United here and it's just a bit of an onslaught at the moment in the first 12 minutes we are going to pop a shout on and to demand more um, don't let him shoot again. Blocked, blocked. Oh, he had three pops at that. We finally get a highlight. It starts from a throw in, but it looks like we've lost the we've lost the ball straight away. Oh my god. We just can't sort of get any sort of foothold. I think we're losing the battle in the midfield a little bit here. And Lukaku is causing all sorts of problems. And well everyone's causing us problems it seems at the moment and it's gonna be 2-0 surely. Great defending there. Last ditch defending. I'd rather it be defended better to start with. But we've got the last ditch in, which is something, I suppose. Then Bale will spin in, and Leno catches that comfortably in the end. Man City not capitalising at the moment, though. They are still only the three points uh, behind us. They're also not winning. They're possibly drawing their game, I think. As we're going into half time, we're really going to have to get into the into them here. Because we not only are we losing, we're just not really doing anything. Chelsea winning. Our oh, Man City aren't playing. That would be why. Um, Liverpool are winning. Yes, we need to... Oh, Man City are playing. They were drawing the Crystal Palace. I did just see that. Um, it says disappointing. I'm going to be aggressive and say... Show me something else in the second half. That seems to have got most of them fired up. Bellerin didn't like it. So we're going to... What are going to say to Bellerin? I mean, he's not exactly playing well. So if he takes anything a bit... You weren't that bad, but you can still improve. I was hoping that might do something. I don't like criticising because it more often than not goes the wrong way. I mean, not criticising, directly criticising, oh, you've been terrible. You can be assertive, you can be aggressive, but don't call them terrible because they're little snowflakes that don't like that, it seems. And we do have a highlight. Hooray race, still on the free kicks, apparently. If we find one, we get, well, we get a couple of shots on target. <laughs> As a start, we've got a VAR, which is absolutely nonsense. And we've got to figure out a way, we'll give it to half hour, perhaps, but we've got to figure out a way of trying to break this United team down because so far, nothing is happening. Oh, and they nearly fire another one in from distance. I mean, they, they are resorting to distance, but when you've got someone like Paul Pogba who can just level one in the top corner, you know, it's not much satisfaction, not much comfort in that really. But system wise, I don't really know what we can do. Um, yeah, we're going to pause and have a look. So this is what we've gone with. We put the two wingers forward, we've made it Sancho and inside forward. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, Pitarin and Park's playmaker on attack. Uh, we've dropped, swapped Torreira and DOR around, dropped Torreira back um, into the DM strata. We we're now, we're now distributing it to Franks rather than to defence. Let's see if that can maybe, I don't know, give us a bit of a. We're going to say, show some passion as well because 
We need to do something a little bit different. I don't know if the changes have taken effect yet. I think they have. DOR straight away. Can he find space? He thought he might be able to find the ball at the top. He doesn't quite, unfortunately. But yeah, in transition now, we're switching to the switching to the flanks, which hopefully can... Oh, look at this. There's just so much space for them. Whenever we, whenever we find the ball, we're surrounded, but we're not... We're not giving them that same problem, which is concerning um, the strikers haven't been on it at all today Gerbils is going to come off um, we've got one strike on the bench we can change really so it doesn't really help we're going to bring actually Sancho can go out on the right if the tyres can come because he really hasn't been at the races today um, and Rams is going to come in the middle for uh, yeah I think, that, I think that'll do we'll see, we'll see what that can do just an equaliser here. I'll take an equaliser. Just I'll take a one of your Man City. I think are losing as well, which I mean it bails us out a little bit. But I mean it could have given us a bit more breathing space. And the, the, the passing is just wonderful. I don't think I've seen us play a, a successful pass yet. That's how little highlights we've had, and the ones we have had have just been terrible. When that's two 0 when it Usman Dembele seals the game with 15 minutes to go, and I've got to say that's probably good night Vienna. We've still got the four point lead over City because obviously they're losing as well to Crystal Palace, which is absolutely bizarre. Um, going to demand more. Very attacking. Uh, there's not really much else more I can do at this stage. Ten minutes to go. We're not going to claw two back at Old Trafford. I mean, we've not even touched the ball for 90 minutes, uh, for 85 minutes, so I can't see the last five changing that too much. Goebbels in behind. Can you get a consolation? No, he hits the post. We can't even get the consolation. I'm sure the other way around, they'd be grabbing one and stopping us getting the clean sheet, but we don't get the same the same luxury, unfortunately. We, we're we going to lose 2-0, unless we can whip up something here in the last minute of the corner. No, that's it. 2-0 at Old Trafford. That's very, very disappointing. Very disappointing, rather. Um, we are going to go aggressive and say, you don't deserve a rest after that performance. We're fired up, which is great. I've said it many, many times over different saves. I prefer how they drew in the end. They get a, oh, got a 91st minute equaliser Man City. But I've said it many, many times. I'd rather you be fired up for the game than we have to tell you afterwards to get fired up for next time. And it probably won't happen either. So Chelsea have closed the gap to four points now. City have closed the gap to three. And yeah, that, that's really not ideal. Um, I'm hoping I've pressed record. Um, I'm going to check. No, I, 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 I think I did. I'll trust it. Um, we're going to send assistant there. Um, Gomez Vals for gold drought. 13 hours, okay. He's maybe someone that has to possibly drop out because he's not really in fine form. Uh, we've got a few players that can step in. We've got Goebbels, we've got Romero, I think, hopefully coming back. Um, but let's have a look at the schedule where we're going to come back. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. I think maybe the Liverpool game, I'm thinking. But to be honest, I am thinking the Leon game. I just want to. I don't want this to, series, this season to be bogged down with like 25 episodes. I, I, yeah, we've been the same team that we've always played. We're going to come back for Leon, then we'll drop something somewhere in the middle, probably. Come back for Leon again. Then we've got a lot of tough games there. So yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the plan. We'll go with that. So we've got a bit of a, a bit of offline stuff to do uh, before we come back. Um, but you know, before that episode, if you have enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like. Um, if you're new around here, please drop a sub as well. At the time of recording, I'm, I'm on 99 subs. I don't know how because I've hardly been uploading. You know, the videos that have proceeded before this, I'm on not, I've crept up to 99 without uploading them yet. They'll be going up very soon, hopefully. But if I can get to that magic 100, I'd be absolutely delighted. Um, and yeah, um, until next time, for that Leon away game, Champions League first knockout round, I'll see you later. Take care.